Today on In Grace, we're in Saudi Arabia climbing the real Mount Sinai. The story of Exodus is huge. Millions of people freed by mega miracles. And then the granddaddy of all miracles, the Red Sea parts, and Israel is saved, born as a nation. Then God leads them to a series of encampments, bringing them closer and closer to the promised land. Before the promised land, God wants to bring them to a special place his mountain in the desert. There, they'll receive the law and set up the tabernacle. Today, we're going to search for and hopefully ascend what is possibly the real Mount Sinai. Before that, we're gonna explore a massive split rock, the possible location of another great miracle. We will start today in the town where Jethro lived and find more evidence that this land in modern Saudi Arabia is in fact ancient Midian. This is Islamic tradition again in this area. They call it the tombs of Jethro. So Jethro and his family. It's interesting though, is that you have Josephus, the Jewish historian, mm -hmm. talking about the Midianites living in caves. Oh, and so this hillside, which overlooks the oasis, is dotted with caves. It's possible that the Midianites lived in these caves if Josephus had correct information. And later the Nabataeans came along and created their tombs. Amazing. Uh, after all these years, this has survived. It is amazing. That's an amazing view. You see the green oasis against the harsh desert. In the background, you see Mount yeah. Sinai in the uh, Jebel Allah's range. Yeah, so from the tomb called the Tombs of Jethro, you see the oasis, which is, it's called Midian, the town of Midian, the area of Midian, and the well of Moses, still called the well of Moses, on their signage today. From this side of the mountain range, you could see Mount Sinai on fire. No kidding, that must have been spectacular. So a big story in Moses' life before the Exodus was a burning bush. Yeah. What would that have been like? So in the story, he's with Jethro's sheep. So we're on the west side of the mountain range near the traditional home of Jethro. We've met shepherds out here with their goats and sheep. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and so he, was, he saw the burning bush and it says that was his first encounter with God on the mountain. It called it the mountain of God. Okay. That's how he identified Mount Sinai. Huh. He saw the burning bush on it. And so that's the first reference we've had to Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, the mountain of God yes. there in Exodus. What I think we should do here at this burning bush is see if we can recreate the miracle. <laughs> we'll so, try. Yeah, okay. let's try it. So you have a lighter. Let's yeah. see if we can set this thing on fire. Now, if it burns and is not consumed. But take your shoes off. Yeah, I will be taking my shoes off. So let's see what let's we can see. do here. Okay. No, we, we have some kindling here, but uh, it's kind of windy today. see. I see you were a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Trained in the wilderness of Midian. <laughs> uh, we got smoke. We have some fire. It's uh, catching the kindling on fire. Okay, folks, we have a burning bush here in the desert. It's being consumed, so it's not a miracle, but check this out. Now, hopefully we won't burn down the whole desert. On this holy ground, God told Moses that he would free his people. Now, Moses is leading the people back to his holy ground to meet the Lord himself. But here at Rephidim, the last campsite before Mount Sinai, the people again begin to complain. Andrew, this is a really awesome sight. You can see behind us this massive yeah. rock and it's split. And Psalms does talk about the rock that Moses struck was claved or split and water coming out of the rock. If you look at the geography of Midian, 
This is on the western side of the Mount Sinai Range, the Jebel al Laz Range, which is behind us. And on the eastern side is the big campground with the big plain, the Cave of Elijah, the mountain that had the fire on it. And so we're just north of that, but we're still part of these mountain peaks. And so it was in this area that they complained of lack of water. And it, as you can see, it's very dry. There's no oasis here. And they come here and they tell Moses, like, why have you brought us out into the wilderness to die again? And so they keep complaining about that. And when they get here, God tells Moses, stand by the rock of Horeb. He said to strike the rock. And so when you think about it, there are rocks all Everywhere. over here. Yeah, there's yeah. rocks. And there's a lot of them that are kind of just somewhat prominent small. and you know, big. But Yeah, there's the big ones too. But he says the rock, and so yeah. everyone would have known because of the way this one just sticks it's up. It's on a hill. Yeah. It sticks out from a far away distance. You yeah. can see this clave rock, like, almost like a hand sticking up there. There's a whole area around here. It's a flat plain. Mm -hmm. And so you have plenty of space for Israelites to encamp. You have plenty of space outside the encampment for the battle with the Amalekites. Yeah, so perfect picture, of course, of Jesus because he's the rock mm -hmm. and he was struck and he brings life, water, living water to anyone who will take it freely. After they left here, they went to the the front side of yeah, this Yeah, the front side, okay. the east side. Well, I'd say let's go there next. Let's go to the front side of Mount Sinai and maybe climb it. I don't know, do you think I can climb the mountain? Yeah, um, it's a tough climb, but let's go do it. Now, I didn't ask you if we should do it. I said, do you think I should do it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you could do it. You think so? Yeah. Okay. And so with Andrew's resounding vote of confidence, we headed to our final destination in this epic adventure. Driving to what is possibly the holy mountain of God, I was reminded of Exodus 19:18. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. The whole mount quaked greatly. With great reverence, we approached this awesome place. All right, Andrew, we're at the base of Mount Sinai. Yes. And there are some interesting things here at the base that, again, tie in to the story of Exodus. You have the golden calf, calf altar, altar not far from here, just yeah. over this hill. Yeah. And there's other stuff, right? Yeah, if you look at the very top of this peak in front of us here, there is actually a cave, the only cave on the mountain. Uh -huh. And we know from 1 Kings chapter 19 that Elijah fled here and said he dwelt in a cave one night in Horeb. And so there is a cave up there. Okay. Um, and then you do, again, have the stream bed that comes out of the mountain. Deuteronomy talks about a stream that flowed down from the mountain. And it said Moses ground the golden calf and sprinkled the powder into the stream and made the Israelites drink it. So had it had been enough water for one to two million people to drink. And it's cool that it has the look of a burnt top. Yeah, and that's where the name comes from, yeah. Jabal Makla, Mountain of Burnt or wow. Burning. Before climbing Jabal Makla, I wanted Andrew to show me some of the other things nearby that all fit with the second half of the book of Exodus. The people camped here for about a year. In this massive expanse, I could just envision several million people receiving the law, building the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant and becoming God's people. In Exodus 32, while Moses was still on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, a surprising and sad event happens at the mountain's base. So this is another site right next to Jabal Makla. Well, this site is covered in cow petroglyphs. Now, when the Saudis were showing this site in 1985, they said these look like Egyptian style cow drawings. Huh. So in ancient Egypt, there were a number of cow gods, you know, pagan gods. One was the Apis bull god, and the other one was the Hathor goddess. And she was, interesting about that goddess, she was the goddess of music and dance, and basically partying and artisans, so those who would make a golden calf. Moses came down and literally threw down the tablets and broke. We broke the law. You know, obviously we need a redeemer. And that's the whole point of the law, the whole point of the commandments. They're right, they're good, mm -hmm. but we cannot save ourselves. We cannot keep them. 
and therefore we had to have one come that could keep the law. It was a schoolmaster that brought us, brings us to Christ, right? Exactly. Points out our sins, but can't save us from the sins. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Wow. This is poignant. Incredible. All right, Andrew, here we are at the base of Jebel Makla, yes. which is in the Jebel Allah's range. Yes, it is. And you're telling me we're gonna hike to that? We will try. I think we'll make it up there. Okay, well, who's carrying me is the question. <laughs> Near the beginning of our hike, Andrew wanted to show us an interesting ruin. This enclosure is ancient, and some think fit the biblical description of Exodus 20 and 24, where the Bible says that Moses set up an altar at the foot of the mountain. The altar was constructed along with 12 pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And here is evidence of what looks like an animal enclosure and marble pillars. Okay, so you said we're we're gonna, we're gonna zigzag with, up this thing and get yeah, to Yeah, we're gonna go kind of up. There's the animal trail kind okay. of partway up here. And we follow these piles of rocks. So these little piles you see, um, that's kind of marking the animal trail. All right, so we made it to, you call this the plateau? Yeah, it's this basin area, like halfway up mm -hmm. this midpoint where there's this flat spot. Mount Sinai, you read through the scriptures and, and you're reading through Exodus and Numbers and mm -hmm. even in the New Testament, That's you know, awesome. Paul mentions Mount Sinai in Arabia. Yeah, Galatians 4, 25. Or yeah, in Galatians 1, he says he came to Arabia, yeah. probably just like Elijah came to Mount Horeb to come and learn from God himself. You know, he had grown up as a Pharisee and you know, he's a Jew of the Jews. He missed like the main thing in the Old Testament and that's the picture of the Messiah as we know as Jesus. So here at this place, you think back to Moses and you think back to the, the thunderings and the, the lightnings and the ground shaking. The sound of the trumpets. I get a sense of that right now. like. We're at the place that- You can imagine that happening here. And then it says the fire that went to the very heaven. It says in Exodus 19. I mean, what a sight. And everything seems to fit. And then also the Bible talks about 70 elders, Moses, Aaron, and- Her and Joshua. Joshua, they were all mm. probably, they would have come to this spot because this is a great spot to kind of- It's like we did. We just had a yeah. lunch here. Yeah. It said they ate with God in Exodus uh, 24, I believe. We're standing on this mountain that is probably Mount Sinai, also called Horeb, Mount yes, Horeb. and they call the Mountain God. Mountain of God, those are the three biblical names, but we also know it as Jebel Makla, Makla, the modern Arabic name for and it. And then also Jebel Allah's, which is kind of the, the range. range is and Allah's means the- Mount, Mountain of the Almonds. Almonds, so why would that be the name of this range? Do you know? Well, you know, there are groves of wild almond trees growing on this mountain range. And what's really interesting is the staff of Aaron was made from almonds, an almond branch. Yeah. Remember they uh, rebelling well, again. And so Moses said, okay, we'll see who is the, should be the chosen or the leader. And Aaron's rod budded and wow. almond blossoms. Wow. So wow. it was from an almond tree. This is really amazing. Wow, look at the mountain. What? There is the peak. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that. The blackened peak of Mount Sinai. Wow, we've actually made it. Andrew, you said <laughs> just another. Almost there. Almost there, another 500. Just over the next peak. Here it is. <laughs> Here we go.
we made it, it's worth it, absolutely worth it, because we're standing in the place where God's presence was and the glory of God, the fire of God, right, was right here. Yeah, well, it's very interesting if you look at the layout of this mountain to where the encampment would be. So here we are on this southern ridge of Jebel Makla. If you start here, if you go eastward, west to east, just like the tabernacle layout, yeah. you have this most holy site on the very top where only Moses was allowed to go up and talk to God. And in the tabernacle, you had a most holy room, uh, the square room where only the high priest would go in once a year. And then from there, moving eastward, you'd go to the holy place where the priests were allowed. And same thing here, you have going eastward, you have a plateau mm -hmm. where they had the 70 elders, uh, Aaron, uh, Joshua, her, they came up and ate with God. You had the table showbread there in the tabernacle. And then moving further out, you come to the courtyard where they had the sacrificial system, where they had the altar burnt offering and the laver. At the base of this mountain, you have the stream bed going out. And past that, you have an altar site. Mm -hmm. We believe is the altar of Moses. Wow. And then you go further out is the encampment, just like you have in the layout of the sanctuary service. So it's a perfect match. You yeah. think of the layout of the mountain to the tabernacle itself. And the direction, you know, it's, again, it's, it's another piece of the puzzle. Everything seems to fit right here to this being the place, uh, you know, even the direction yeah, of, amazing. you know, the top of the mountain all the way down and, and having that bench, that plateau where, you know, multiple people could sit and observe. And then you have lots of room in the plane for several million people. Yeah. So again, all of the puzzle pieces fit together, but this being the very center of God's holiness. And I still feel like when we're standing on Mount Sinai, you know, you, you sense God's holiness, his reverence, his wrath too against sin. It, it all culminates here. You know, these are basic things that almost every society observes. You don't steal, you don't lie, you know, you don't kill. And this is where it all the law comes from. It was given here, the mm -hmm. voice of God. First, he verbally gave it, then he wrote it on stone, showing how permanent it is. Yeah. This has been one of the big privileges of my life, Andrew, to stand here. And I would never have come here if it weren't for you. Thank you so much. I'm glad it's to amazing. help you guys out. This has been quite an adventure. We've seen evidence of Israel in Egypt, a logical route to a dead end on a beach that could hold several million freed slaves, a deep body of water with a natural walkable slope, several oases in Saudi Arabia that fit the biblical descriptions of Israel's camps, archeological evidence for Jethro and the Midians, a split rock, altars, a large plain, and a mountain that fits all the Bible's criteria. While I'm not absolutely positive that we're at the real Mount Sinai, everything seems to fit. But I am positive about something. God is real. He's powerful and he's holy. He's loving and he's forgiving. For he sent us a savior that did what we could not do. Jesus kept the law and fulfilled the types and prophecies in every way. We broke the law. Right away after creation, Adam and Eve sinned, and sin passed upon all men. God promised Adam and Eve that there would be a savior, one that would come, that would, that would save us from our sin. And God raised up a people to bring us the savior, the people grew mighty in Egypt. They came across the Red Sea. They came here to Mount Sinai, but they failed over and over, just like we do. We fail the Lord over and over. So the law is not enough. We need the law giver to come and save us from our sins, from breaking the law. And that's where the cross comes into the story. The people eventually did get into the land of Israel. After the centuries passed, there was a promised one born in Bethlehem as the prophets said that he would. He grew up, did great things, raised the dead, healed the sick, but he died on a cross. The, the most innocent person ever to live, he was actually perfect. He never sinned. He didn't have the sin nature, but he died on a cross for our sins. And he said, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And if you'll look upon the cross, if you will look upon Jesus in faith and say, I can't save myself, I put my trust in him, you will be saved from breaking the law. You will be saved from our sins. You say, I'm a pretty good person. I think my good will outweigh my bad. No, one bad outweighs all the good you can do because we are then sinners. And God paid for our sins by sending his son to die for us. His name is Jesus. And if you will trust in him, you will be saved today, tomorrow, and forever. I'd like to help you make Christmas as powerful as possible. Here at In Grace, we have some really beautiful Christmas cards with original artwork, and each of them have the gospel on them. We'd love to send you 10 of these for your gift of any amount to In Grace. We also have some beautiful olive wood Christmas ornaments from Bethlehem and this nativity set. Contact us today. Join In Grace in celebrating the true meaning of Christmas. When you make a gift of any amount, you'll receive this wonderful set of 10 original artwork Christmas cards. These cards are not only beautiful, but also an easy way to share the clear gospel of grace with your friends and loved ones this holiday season. For gifts of $35 or more, we'll send you not only the cards, but also 10 beautiful olive wood Christmas ornaments, lovingly crafted in Bethlehem, Israel. These ornaments are not just decorations, they're a symbol of hope and love from the Holy Land. As a special thank you for your generous gift of $100 or more, you'll also receive a stunning handmade nativity set from Bethlehem. This exquisite set not only serves as a reminder of the birth of Christ, but also plays the peaceful melody of Silent Night, bringing the spirit of Christmas right into your home. All gifts received before the end of the year will be doubled as part of our year-end matching gift challenge. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or visit ingrace.tv for more information. Next week on In Grace, Jim Scudder Jr. takes you to Nazareth, Israel in our new series, Jesus First Days. Nazareth is the place where the story of Christmas really begins. There was a young woman named Mary. A second century tradition says Mary was here at this ancient well when she heard the news from the angel Gabriel that she was highly favored by God and she would bring forth the Christ, the Messiah. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry Thank you for your prayers and gifts.